So you're thinking about moving into Alameda and you heard that the east end of the island is pretty nice, uh, but you don't know really where that is and uh, what it's like to live there. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video and we're gonna start right now. guys, Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International coming to you with another video, this time neighborhood feature. We're going to talk about the East End. This is where I actually live uh, and so I figured it was a great place to start. Um, I am doing, as I mentioned in the previous one, a series on the island city of Alameda. So I'm going to be going through all the neighborhoods and lifestyle things. Wanted to give you a flavor for what it's like to live here, what you can expect, uh, the way the neighborhoods flow, all that good stuff, um, so that you can hopefully use it as a guide to narrow down your list. Uh, if you get value out of this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, because I am going to continue to put out weekly content like this and continue the series on Alameda, and you're not going to want to miss any of that. So, without any further ado, let's get into it and talk about Alameda's East End. So one of the things that most people comment on here in the East End is how safe it is. Uh, basically, there's a very low crime rate. A lot of people are walking their kids to and from school or their kids are biking to and from school, uh, playing in the streets or at the parks. It's really just generally safe and you get that sense as soon as you come here. It's also very quiet. Uh, some might even call it a bit sleepy because by about 8.30, maybe 9 o'clock, uh, most of the streets are pretty quiet. Everyone's more or less gone inside except for the occasional backyard barbecue. Um, but it, it definitely shuts down a little earlier than uh, many other parts of the East Bay. The other thing that's really obvious and amazing about this place is it's so community driven. You know, on any given Friday or Saturday night, you'll see uh, people hanging out in their front yards or even sometimes in the street, having a barbecue or having just an outdoor uh, happy hour. It's just one of those places that you honestly can know your neighbors by name. You see each other regularly walking dogs, walking kids, playing in the park, or joining a, a pickup game of soccer or frisbee at one of those parks. Um, whatever the case is, it's really community driven. You see the same faces over and over again, and it really just builds a strong tie uh, that is hard to find in many of the other places. All right, so there are a couple micro neighborhoods that you definitely want to be aware of uh, because they are all a little bit unique and different. Uh, so the first one is over on the estuary side which is the Marina District. It's a very skinny, very private section uh, that borders the Oakland Estuary and the homes that are on the estuary actually all have deep water docks. So if you're a boater, that's a really cool space to look for. Uh, then you cross Fernside Boulevard and you move into the Fernside District or as we call it, just the Fernside. This is typically uh, the most expensive of all the neighborhoods on the East End. Um, the homes are older and typically larger, so they fetch a higher price point. And uh, there's just a lot of interesting architecture and beauty in that space as well. Um, Gibbons being the one street that comes to mind for most people because of these wonderful, huge, mature trees that line the entire thing and create this very cool canopy effect. Um, but you find that uh, there's a lot of older trees kind of scattered throughout and it's not very dense. Almost exclusively, it's all single family. There's very few condos, uh, if any, and there's not a whole lot of multifamily apartment rentals either. There, pro there are some Victorians and some older homes that have been cut up and turned into uh, you know, two or three units, but generally speaking, it's, it's all single family homes in there. Then you move into more of the traditional East End. So uh, the price point definitely lowers here. Uh, on average, by a little bit, the houses are typically a little smaller. Uh, you have a lot of California bungalows as well as craftsmen's here, but you do get plenty of Victorians and contemporaries as well. Um, but you also have a little bit more density. There are uh, some apartment buildings and condos 
here scattered throughout, as well as some older large Victorians that have been turned into multifamily. So um, parking's a little more dense. There's just a little more people per uh, square foot, if you will. And uh, it's just a slightly different vibe, but definitely uh, still wonderful and charming. Then you have East Shore, which is a section that borders San Leandro Bay. Um, it is by and large very private, very slow paced, not a lot of through streets just like the Marina District, but it, all those homes are relatively a little newer. Um, and generally speaking, the majority of them were built in the 60s and were single level ranch style. So it's definitely a different architectural feel there as well. All right, so now that you know where the neighborhoods all are, uh, let's break down the schools real quick. Uh, there are two public elementary schools, Edison and Otis, and those are sort of divided on a north-south geography, which you can see here. And those both then feed into Lincoln Middle School, uh, which is down on the very east end of the island, which also borders San Leandro Bay. And then that goes into Alameda High School, which by the way, they did just do a really beautiful renovation on that building. Um, and it's absolutely stunning. So you should go take a drive by that next time you're in town. And Alameda does have a few private schools on the island, one of which is St. Philip Neary, which is pre-K through eighth grade, uh, located right here on High Street um, and just a block from Ensenal. Uh, so really easily to get to and well located there as well. So another thing that I find really awesome about the East End is there's just a couple of awesome parks around. Uh, there's three in particular that you should be aware of that you can pretty much walk to no matter what part of the island or what part of the East End you're on. The first one is Lincoln Park. It's located between Fernside and High Street. Uh, there's a huge baseball diamond, a swimming pool, a jungle gym, an outdoor basketball court, pickleball court, bocce, you name it, they've got it there. Depending on what time of the day you're out, whether you're walking your dog in the afternoon uh, or if you're there just in the morning, there's gonna be people present. A lot of people hang out in this space, use it for different things, uh, pick up soccer games, obviously on the weekends, as well as organize baseball and practice uh, during the weekday afternoons. And it's just kind of a community gathering spot where a lot of people go and spend time outside. Same thing on uh, Cruzy Park, which is adjacent to Otis Elementary. Uh, a bit of a smaller park. It's got four baseball diamonds built in, plus uh, some tennis and a jungle gym. Um, so it's a bit of a different feel, definitely more open. Uh, but it's a place where uh, a lot of sports take place during the weekends and after school. And people even do certain things like pick up Frisbee League, which is something that I actually participate in over there as well. And then there's Jackson Park. It's the smallest of the three. It's uh, located as basically a huge median in the middle of Park Ave, which is a block off of Park Street. Uh, and is just a really cool green space with a ton of wonderful trees and a beautiful gazebo right in the middle um, where a lot of people will walk their dogs and play over there if they live on that end of the East End. Something that I really personally appreciate about living here is the proximity to shopping. You've got South Shore Plaza not too far away. You've got a Safeway and a Trader Joe's there as well as a ton of other restaurants and shops. Uh, on the other end of the island, you've got the Knob Hill Plaza, which is another great grocery store. And then right smack in the middle of the East End, you've got Ensenal Market. Uh, love that place for a little community grocery store. You pop in right before dinner to grab those last couple of things. It's so convenient. Most people ride their bikes or just walk to it because it's really just that community meeting spot where people are all running in and out to grab those last minute items. And that's my overview of Alameda's East End. Hopefully you got some value out of that and learned something about the neighborhoods, the parks, the schools, uh, and most importantly, the vibe. It's really quiet, it's very safe here, and it's very community driven. If you do live here or you are intending on living here, uh, you're gonna get to know your neighbors. And it's, I gotta say, that's one of the best parts about living here. Uh, if you did get value out of the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. I'd love to engage with you there. And subscribe to the channel because I am going to be putting out weekly videos uh, about Alameda and other neighborhoods as well as other parts of the East Bay on a weekly basis. So you don't want to miss any of that. Uh, so without any further ado, 
I'm gonna sign it off. So this is Hans Strazina with the Gundermann Group at Keller Williams Luxury International signing off for now. See you on the next one.